I want to talk to you about hybrid wedding photography. I don't think that enough people are offering it. I don't think that enough people would know about it necessarily. It's not necessarily a new concepts, but in the wedding industry, you've got your wedding photographers and you've got your wedding videographers, and they usually work apart. Some photographers offer dual packages where you, you book the two in one package and they'll turn up uh, and you know, you'll have one of each or two of each on the day. And I'm not knocking that. I believe it to be a great thing to offer clients. I find one thing I've learned in the industry so far about wedding clients is they either want videography or they don't. At least here in the UK, the, the most traditional thing to definitely book is a photographer. And it seems that I found that videography is not necessarily an afterthought, but it will be something that they plan to add on after the fact. So who wants videography, I guess? When it comes to uh, hiring a wedding videographer, what clients are looking for is a full length highlight film that includes all the aspects of the day, all, the th all of the ceremony, all of the speeches, very comprehensively put together very skillfully put together, very nicely edited, cinematic, stuff like that. Hybrid wedding photography for me doesn't encapsulate that. So before I jump any further and explain why I think more photographers should offer it, I just want to say that I don't class myself as a videographer and that that's definitely a very in-demand product and skill set. I'm not trying to get people away from being interested in booking wedding videography. I think that it's very important and equally as important as photography in many ways. And I work alongside videographers myself. As a photographer, I've, I've worked alongside them and done photo only. I do photo only by myself. Hybrid to me is a completely unique thing. It's not a videography as such, it's not a separate thing. I don't think someone could do both proper videography and photography as one person. You can do a wedding highlight film and capture the moments uh, 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 the way you would with photography as one person, absolutely. But I have to stipulate that's not my skill set. I'm not a videographer, I'm a photographer. I never had any intention of doing any video, but when I was learning about the wedding photography industry and the business side of things, I was watching a lot of Taylor Jackson content on YouTube and I ended up actually becoming a member of his Patreon and one of the things that really stuck out to me when I was setting up my business was Taylor's insistence on offering something unique to your clients. Whilst I don't believe that the marketplace is saturated and this particular subject I want to do a different video about because it's something I've got quite a strong opinion on where a lot of photographers are in some sort of race to the bottom where they're competing with price and undercutting each other and not really focused on why they're wedding photographers and what their clients want from them or what they can offer the client as such. They're, they're, they're obsessed with what they do. I'm a wedding photographer and it's very black and white. But, uh, and I don't believe that the marketplace is saturated in that sense. And I think that there's plenty of clients for everybody. However, I do believe in standing out and a lot of the stuff I'm going to touch on on this channel will hopefully shed some wisdom that I've learned and I want to pass on to you watching this, especially if you're starting up and you don't know which direction to go in and you, you, you want to know how to get more bookings. I hope that some of the information I'll share will perhaps help you teach you a, so a thing or two. But standing out and there's a whole thing with marketing where instead of saying what you do, you know, explain why you do it and make the client the center of your focus on the, your website copy and your marketing materials and stuff like that. You know, the client's not interested in when you were established or where you went to school, how many dogs you have and, and stuff like that. They're interested in themselves and their wedding day. So there's a whole lot that I can talk about, but the whole reason I've mentioned that point is because Taylor Jackson used to mention, obviously, standing out and offering something different. And I think if I remember back, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, and I might not be 100% factually correct, I do believe he was probably the first or one of the first to offer photo and video together as one person, at least in Canada. And the populari popularity of that has actually spread. And as I touched on it earlier, I believe that videography is a very important part of 
somebody's wedding, but I've noticed a lot of people, unfortunately, for whatever reason it is, don't have videography at the forefront of their thoughts. They've got the photographer booked and they don't think of video. And I see a lot of last minute requests. We weren't gonna have one. There's a bit of budget left over, as anyone know, a videographer. And the whole concept of hybrid, where you do photo and video as one person, it's essentially switching between photo and, and video modes on your camera. So I shoot with two of these. I've got two Nikon Z5s. One of them is recording me and the other one's in my hand. So essentially what you'll be doing is when you're shooting photos, whatever's happening, switch to video, record a few seconds or whatever it is, flip back to photo, carry on shooting. And you approach the wedding day essentially as you would if you were doing photo only. So whatever your style, if it's documentary and you're sort of stood back a little bit and just letting things happen. So while, while the bride's getting ready, you know, she's being touched up, you'll take a few pictures of her being touched up and then you'll switch the video. Uh, and, and take a few seconds of that for B-roll. Same with your establishing shots of the venue. You know, you'll take detail shots and, and outside and inside and whatever. And you'll do the same with B-roll. You'll take some B-roll and then uh, you'll film parts of the ceremony, you'll film parts of the speeches and the reactions and then people dancing and all that stuff as you would while you're photographing the day, you're also taking video clips. And at the end of it, you're essentially putting together a highlight video. Could be three minutes long, five minutes long. So there's a difference there because a videographer will probably have a more extended like 10 minute highlight video. They will film all of the ceremony, all of the speeches and put a proper comprehensive package of, of video together. And it's videography, the focus is solely on video and they will have two or three cameras, lots of tripods, mics, the whole shebang. Um, with a highlight video, essentially you can keep it as simple as just some slowed down B-roll clips together with some music, or you can go a little bit higher up um, and with, with what you offer. And what I personally do is I'll use this, it's a recorder. Uh, I'll, I'll put the model number on the screen, I can never remember what it is. I can't even find it written on here, but I'll, I'll, I'll link it. I've done a, a review about this actually, I like them. Um, I'm actually having some problems though. The USB port is broken on both of my mics, so I'm gonna have to replace them before my next wedding. But essentially you get yourself a recorder or that's what I've done, you don't have to. As I'm doing the day, uh, as I said, I'll switch between photo and video, take lots of three, four second clips, stuff like that. During the ceremony, what I'll do is I'll pop one of these in the breast pocket of the groom's suit jacket or along those lines and record all of the audio from the ceremony. This actually picks up the bride really well. You don't really want to be miking up a bride. There's no way really you can hide something like this. It's, it's just, don't bother. This in the breast pocket of the groom will pick up the celebrant or the registrar, the groom and the bride very, very clearly. Um, I'll try and, I, I might show you some examples so that you can listen to, to, to what I mean about how good the audio is. Obviously, invest in a decent bit of kit. I declare, yeah. I declare, that I know, that I know, of no legal reason, of no legal reason, why I, Emily J. Woodland, why I, Emily J. Woodland, may not be joined, may not be joined, in marriage. You can have a couple of them. You can have one with the celebrant, one with the groom. Same with speeches then, I'll tape it to the mic that they're using, so as it's taped, next to the mic and they're holding the mic, they're speaking into it, it's recording their voice. And what I do then when I'm editing the highlight videos that I make is I will use some of that audio to tell the story of the day. So um, one, one of my most popular hybrid videos, um, the sister of the bride uh, read a poem as her speech. So that poem then I used as the story element of the highlight video. Once upon a time, there were three young princesses circling in the Argos catalogue. Our wedding dresses. We chose the clothes we wanted, circling almost every page. The dream Barbie house, suitable for every age. We played pretend fairy games and made Barbie marry Ken. Amy created a music video with her best friend. And put the b-roll of the day and then I'm recording elements of the ceremony as well so as they're 
uh, stood there saying their vows, um, popping away with the photos and stuff like that. But then, oh, hold it steady. If you've got yourself a mirrorless camera like the Z5 or whatever you shoot with, the chances are if you've got in-body stabilization at least in the camera or at least on the lens, I think I've got it in the lens and the body here, um, stood there like that should be enough to get some stable footage. It took me a while to practice, but it's easy enough. So that's how I shoot a, a hybrid wedding video. As I said, you, you can keep it as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. But the skill set I think is limited to what you're able as a photographer to do with your video knowledge, whatever video knowledge you've got. You might be also a filmmaker, I don't know, um, but obviously photographers are photographers and videographers are videographers. But you'll be limited to as to how much you can actually do because you're running and gunning, it's documentary style, it's fast paced. But what that offers your clients essentially is an option. It's not black and white anymore. It's not, I'll either have a videographer or I won't. Or it might be, I would have had, you know, they've paid 1500 pounds for photography, but and a videography package they want is also 1500 pounds. They might only have 600 quid left in the budget. So an alternative that is you offering them a highlight film and adding another five, 600 quid to your package. And yeah, there's a little bit of extra work involved. You need to train yourself to think on the day to remember to switch the video, record the video clips. You need to be mindful of the fact that your microphone's recording if you're gonna record any audio, things like that. You need to learn video. I'll make another video on the settings I use. They're very basic. What I know is quite simple to learn and I'll make it, I'll make a separate video to, to show you what I do and how I do it and the settings I use and stuff like that. But you don't have to overcomplicate it and I think it's a great option to add. It makes you stand out. If you add hybrid package to your website packages, you know, especially if you're displaying your prices, what it could also do is it could drive more business towards your photo only package. People will look at it and go, oh, you know, he's charging £2,000 for hybrid and £1,500 for photo only. Suddenly the photo only package looks a bit more affordable when you might actually get more people booking that. Uh, the mentality of how people see the value in something it, it can be quite quite scientific and I don't understand it fully myself but yeah I, I I wanted to share that with you I hope it inspires some of you go and check out Taylor Jackson's channel he is amazing in the wedding photography industry I've learned a lot from him I've made some friends from his uh, original Patreon Facebook group. Uh, me and them are in touch on a daily basis, inspiring each other, motivating each other, kicking each other up the ass to, to, to get things done and helping each other out. And I think, you know, the, the wedding community can be a fantastic place. But if you haven't yet started offering a highlight film with your photography, don't wait any longer. Pick up your camera next time you're at a wedding, shoot some clips. Don't tell the client that you're doing it. Just get a bit of practice in. Maybe even arrange a family shoot. That's how I got started. I did a family shoot when I bought my first Z5. I wanted to test it out, get used to it, because I used to shoot Canon. So I wanted to sort of test out the ergonomics and learn what the buttons were. And I did a photo shoot in the park and I took some video clips of the family like the kids were playing. And then they recommended me to their friend uh, who wanted a highlight video for their wedding and had a minimal budget left. I think they booked me like three weeks before the wedding. And I said, yeah, I'll come along as long as you understand that I'm very limited as to what I can offer you, but I'll put something together. And I did actually put something together they were quite happy with. And then that coupled up with the stuff that I learned from Taylor Jackson's group gave me the confidence to start shooting my first few weddings just without telling the client you know I'd be I'd be recording some video clips I slipped the mic into the groom's pocket but he didn't know what it was for uh, on a couple of occasions they maybe had an inkling but they weren't expecting anything and as you practice you get better and if you feel confident enough even if you only whack it on for an extra 100 200 pounds at first I definitely think you can get more bookings I definitely think you'll stand out more amongst the competition and in a marketplace where <clears throat> it's always been quite copy and paste quite black and white and people want either one or the other uh, what you're starting to realize is that if they don't get offered something how could they possibly know it exists so show them that it exists they might actually want it i hope you've enjoyed it if you found any sort of value from this video today please hit the subscribe 
Comment below if you found this valuable and comment below if there's anything you want me to explain further and I'll see you on the next one.